This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Stick around to find out how you can get 83% off and one month for free. Hey hey, Marcus House with you here and another incredible week of space news. After last week's loss of the SN3 Starship, we've been super surprised to see the SN4 come together very rapidly with many of the ship segments needed for the new build. They really are pumping out these Starship prototypes now even faster than what I had expected. Along with that, we say goodbye to the very last Dragon 1 capsule with its return from the CRS-20 mission. We witnessed some amazing new unseen footage from SpaceX released fresh this week. Just incredible how close this landing was from 2017. Then on top of all that, Rocket Lab pulls out all the stops with this amazing mid-air recovery demonstration with an electron test tank and two sleek looking helicopters capturing it right out of the air. Okay Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. This week featured rapid Starship development. A great deal of logistical work has gone on in preparation of the Starship SN4. Firstly though, the huge cleanup of the SN3. The main structure was sliced up and taken away very quickly in the week. In my video last week we talked about Elon's tweet stating that SpaceX would reuse some of the SN3 thrust section. It has been interesting watching this play out during the week. The lower skirt section of this was cut and separated from the top section. At this point in time it seemed that it was the skirt that would almost be reused and the more complex top section we were not so sure about. Some beautiful shots here from Boca Chica Gal however because if we zoom right in we can see an incredible amount of detail here on the setup around the thrust puck structure and the liquid oxygen bulkhead. Now this label on one of these engine mounts says SN19 as far as we can see here which we assume means that one of these three engines in the tweet from Elon's last week is the 19th Raptor engine. We can see this one on the right here with the number 18. So the 19th Raptor makes sense. Comparing these photos we see this very similar structure to the top of the Raptors from Elon's tweet. Here are these same structures mounted under that thrust puck architecture. These massive hinge systems allow the three Raptor engines to gimbal and change the direction of thrust which then allows the program to control the Starship test vehicle. With three engines gimbling SpaceX will have the ability to control the vessel's roll and the horizontal movement over the landing pad as well as the altitude. For the most part any reaction control systems that will be used should only be needed to correct any tilting that the three Raptors can't correct quickly enough. I'm still assuming the first flight will be that simple 150 meter hop test similar to the Starhopper flight but that all remains to be seen. What do you think? I'm willing to bet Elon Musk is getting quite impatient at this point and would like to see more ambitious tests occur rather than the similar Starhopper style flight. Do you think we're likely to see an initial test that pushes the boundaries here even further, let me know in the comments. Now Elon's tweet here revealed the previously unseen fuel header tank attached to the common bulkhead. This was awesome to see. The newer version here attaches right into the bulkhead between the bottom of the liquid methane tank and the top of the liquid oxygen tank. The liquid oxygen header tank will continue to be placed in the nose for now, although the future versions of the Starship with the clamshell design will likely see this tank moved somewhere within the the main tanks would be my thought on it all. They are certainly not going to want header tanks getting in the way of this structure I wouldn't think. Now for those of you unfamiliar with the role of the header tanks, they essentially would remain full at all times without the presence of gases being inside. Normally of course on the surface of the earth the fuel will sit happily at the bottom of the tanks quite fine, but in zero gravity all the fuel just floats around in the tanks like what we see here in this old footage from the CRS-5 mission. So unless these header tanks are full and can be used for that quick engine start no matter what orientation the Starship is in it would be very dangerous to try starting the engines. Of course you can coax fuel down into the bottom of the tanks using small puffs from reaction control systems when in zero gravity as has been done with many spacecraft before. In these situations though it can be a much more relaxed process with precise timing and countdowns to engine ignition. Compare that to the event of a turbulent belly flop maneuver and associated landing and you can see why head tanks keeping that landing fuel together is critical for the Starship just before touchdown. This allows enough fuel for engines to fire up for landing without the worry of dangerous gases flowing through the engines while in startup. So after a mission, while the 
main tanks are mostly empty, the header tanks provide enough reserve fuel to land. This image here is actually the opposite side of the header tank. Now to visualize how these two fit together, we can use this example from Raphael, which illustrates it quite well. I look forward to learning how SpaceX will route the plumbing from the nose header tanks. I must admit the idea of this still confuses me a little. I assume there would need to be multiple fuel lines to pump fuel up into the header tank and then back out of it. If you've seen anything to give a better indication of this, please do share it in the comments. Now a huge thank you to Raphael who has been keeping us all up to date with these segments of the SN4. We of course have the nose cone which we assume is going to be used once we have a successful static fire. The top liquid methane bulkhead and the attached ring segments are ready for stacking so this is great news. The next core section making up the common bulkhead between the two tanks is already stacked and the previously mentioned header tank is already installed or at least the top half of the tank has been. That was from Elon's Twitter feed, that shot right there. Next up we have the the new thrust puck structure and the bottom liquid oxygen bulkhead which is still ongoing but nearing completion as well. And as far as we think we know at this point in time, the three Raptor engines are just sitting there at the facility awaiting installation when the time is right. Now we believe the skirt section from the SN3 will be used for this segment here, but that is going to depend on how easily that will be to reattach. So yes, all of this has happened in just a little over a week, so amazing stuff. Now around the Boca Chica site a lot of other work has been occurring during the week. Construction on the overall facility continues with new structures being completed rapidly. After the mishap with the SN3, the Berry Crane was shipped off to work elsewhere. Now I'm not sure if we'll see this same crane come back for the SN4 or if we'll end up with something new next time around. I have to say though the skill of all of the crane operators around the site is super impressive. The size of these components are just massive and they're shooting around the site all the time with incredible accuracy. Speaking of that, the SN2 Starship test vessel was picked up and moved this week onto the concrete test stand here. I'm not certain what the intention is with this structure now, but I'm sure interested to find out. This test tank of course was created prior to the SN3 Starship in order to rapidly test the thrust puck structure and the needed tank pressures. All of those tests of course had passed successfully. Now if you would like to know more about the SN2, I've got a video here that shows all of this in more detail. While you're here of course, please do consider subscribing. There is loads more news coming, not only with Starship development, but Starlink and Crew Dragon. And I'd love to share all that with you. Now I just need to shout out Andrew Gilmore here. If you scroll through this Twitter feed, there is request after request after request asking Elon to provide footage of the Bulgaria Sat 1 booster footage from 2017. Now any lesser person would have tweeted a few times and just moved on, but not Andrew. In this case, persistence made perfect because Elon during the week tweeted this back saying, here you go Andrew, and wow, this is some amazing footage. I must admit I had forgotten about this booster from back in 2017. At the time we saw this flash of thrust hitting the water besides the drone ship and then the video hangs and at the time this was the most challenging landing to date and it was at that point many of us had just assumed that the booster had been lost already. Shortly after though the live footage returned and there it was just sitting on the drone ship but now we can see this full footage. Just check this out for a second. The booster comes screaming in horizontally, tilting just enough at the last minute to stick the landing. Just. Now that is indeed some pucker factor right there. How close was that? Also released was the full uninterrupted footage of the re-entry and landing from the perspective of the booster itself. This again, as we've seen with other footage, is just breathtaking. Now on top of all this, SpaceX shortly after tweeted saying that four years ago today, Falcon 9 landed on the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship for the first time. Additional Falcon landing footage and they're linked is the playlist containing not only the booster landing footage that we've all had access to for quite some time, but brand new footage that has only now just been uploaded. Many of these are unlisted as well, so if you want to check that out, you'll find it within the playlist section of SpaceX's YouTube channel. Everything from the Bulgaria Sat 1 landing footage and above here are brand new, so go check that out. Some of these are incredible quality as well, with some going right up to 4K, such as those from the high quality cameras at the landing site, such as the CRS-AT. 
teen mission, and of course the beautiful landing zone footage of the double booster landings with the Falcon Heavy test flight here, and incredible footage of the Arabsat 6A landing as well. So yes, this is the library we've been begging for for so long. Thank you SpaceX and Elon Musk for providing this. It would be so incredibly awesome to see SpaceX release and maintain a library of all of this footage in high definition at all times, similar I guess to what we see with NASA's image and video library. It'd be great for creators and researchers to do much more in-depth analysis of the missions and also of course to be able to share the amazing footage retrieved from recovered boosters and drone ships. Hopefully SpaceX will make a habit of releasing this stuff more frequently. So this week we say a final goodbye to the very last Dragon 1 spacecraft. This was the conclusion to the amazing commercial resupply service Mission 20 by SpaceX. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but before that, this week's sponsor. Now, you all know how this works. To spend the time I do to research and edit and create this content for everyone, funding and support is super important. I couldn't do this without it. Today, this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, who have been huge supporters of my channel. A VPN or a virtual private network is a privacy protection tool that provides instant online safety. Have you run out of content to stream while being cooped up at home? Well, never fear because with Surfshark VPN you can quite literally open up a world of new content to digest from around the world, previously locked to you. Simply change which country you're accessing the internet from and boom, you now have access to new libraries to digest. Not only that, but this can also allow access to social platforms and external news services that have perhaps been restricted from you. With your IP address, your behavior is tracked for marketing purposes all over the internet. Ever wonder why you are seeing an ad for a product you looked at the week before? With a VPN, you can mask your activity and avoid this data being provided to marketing companies. Surfshark encrypts all the data sent via the internet so that no one can see your passwords, photos, videos, or sensitive data. And there are loads of reasons why you may not want internet service providers and network administrators tracking what sites you you're viewing. The internet should be an open hub of knowledge and by using Surfshark VPN you can control what you can see and what data mining services can't see. Not only that, they're the only VPN service to offer one account to use on an unlimited number of devices. If you would like to support my channel and are also considering a VPN or even changing your existing VPN, go to surfshark.deals marks and you will get 83% off plus one month for free. With a 30 day money back guarantee, there's no risk in trying it out for yourself. The link is in the description below. So yes, a final goodbye to the very last Dragon 1 spacecraft, the conclusion to the amazing commercial resupply service 20 mission by SpaceX. Early in the week, just as the vessel was about to detach and return, I must admit I was feeling quite nostalgic about the CRS missions and this final Dragon return was certainly a highlight for me for the year. Yes, these recovery missions I guess have become more commonplace now, but we need to just take a second to remember how incredible the first few missions were for SpaceX. This final mission to me seemed like a real end to the amazing infancy of SpaceX as a company, the end of the first chapter of many between SpaceX and NASA. This little Dragon 1 capsule is always going to be the vessel that allowed SpaceX to be the company that it is today. Without these commercial resupply missions funding for the continual development of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy just wouldn't have been possible. So the Dragon was released right on time with the Canadarm letting go of the vessel. Shortly after, the Dragon completed several departure burns with the Draco engines, slowly retreated away from the station and made its way out of the keep out sphere as well as the approach ellipsoid. This then completed the joint operations between the NASA and SpaceX team. Afterward, the Draco thrusters fired back up to initiate the deorbit burn that slowed the spacecraft around 400 kilometers per hour or so, just enough to let the Dragon capsule re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Not a substantial amount of Delta V is really needed to drop back into the atmosphere from low Earth orbit, not at least if we compare it to the incredible orbital velocity the vessel needs to obtain orbit, which is around 27,500 kilometers per hour. Once the deorbit burn was completed, the Dragon ditched the trunk segment which was left to burn up in the atmosphere as planned. 
Around six hours after departure from the International Space Station, the Dragon deployed its drogue chutes, followed by the main chutes, and then splashed down for the very last time in the Pacific Ocean, returning with it, of course, around 1.8 tonnes of cargo and rubbish to unload. This marked the ending of the commercial resupply Phase 1 contracts, and what an incredible achievement for everyone involved in these first 20 CRS missions. A huge congratulations to SpaceX and NASA on this achievement. Next up, of course, is the next generation vehicle, the Dragon 2, that replaces Dragon 1 for future commercial resupply contracts. NASA and SpaceX currently still suggesting the first mission might occur as early as October of this year. If all goes well with the Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission in around a month's time, that is going to be looking very good for the CRS-21 mission. That is going to be the first mission for SpaceX that falls in that second phase of commercial resupply missions by NASA. Now we can't report on the space news of the week without mentioning this incredible footage that dropped this week by Rocket Lab. Just a few weeks ago, the team successfully completed a mid-air recovery demonstration of an electron test tank. This is a major step in the progression to recover the electron booster's first stage, which could dramatically reduce the cost of launch for Rocket Lab. This test involved two helicopters, the first carrying the test electron tank and the other towing a capture hook to snag the parachute tether line as the test tank slowly descends through the atmosphere. At around 1,500 metres in altitude, the test article was snagged and the helicopter proceeded to drag the test tank to the launch site. Also released was a series of 360 degree virtual reality videos which is quite the experience. You can see the perspective from the booster itself while being captured. Another view allows you to witness the experience from the top of the capture hook line and you can even ride along in the capture helicopter during the mid-air recovery demonstration. You can find links to these in the video list on Rocket Lab's YouTube channel. Now, Although the Electron rocket is much smaller than, say, the Falcon 9 boosters, this to me is still super exciting. By lowering the cost of rockets that are capable of launching small satellites into specific orbits, that is a big win for many companies wanting to send small payloads exactly where they need them. Reducing the cost of payloads to orbit would be a significant plus to the small satellite market. So in terms of upcoming SpaceX launches, the GPS launch has been delayed sadly due to the current lockdowns. That has been pushed back from late April to late June at this point in time. Never fear though, we still do have the next Starlink launch around April 16th. So yes, there is still some action going on there. Now just quickly, a huge thank you to my amazing patrons here. You are all quite literally turning this dream of mine of creating this content from a hobby into something much more significant. If you like what I'm doing and you'd like to join our awesome patrons here, head to patreon.com slash marcushouse. You can interact with me more directly via the included exclusive roles in Discord. You can check out some exclusive patron-only content and you can also have your name listed right here like these other incredible people. A massive thank you as well to my quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would like to be a part of this, follow me on Twitter and please do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today we have my video last week talking about the SN3 Starship Destruction. In the top right is my latest video and in the bottom right, content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.